Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Melt Banana album, Fetch. Melt Banana is a Japanese hardcore punk and noise rock band that has been around since the 90s, or at least that's what you would think if you didn't actually know that they were sent from the future to the past as proof that the 1975 is as boring as rock music gets. Hmm. What? All right, I'm, I'm sorry, I just don't, I don't really like them. <sighs> you say we'll go where nobody knows, with guns hidden under our petticoats. No, we're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no. There's the good stuff. Well, since about the 2007 album Bambi's Dilemma, Melt Banana has pretty much been on hiatus from releasing new studio material, but now they are back with this LP, Fetch. And on this LP, as it is with their previous LPs, Melt Banana has a pretty unique sound and style when it comes to rock music. One that has won them over some pretty passionate fans, some of whom are pretty big names in experimental and underground music, guys like Mike Patton, John Zorn, the Melvins. But their sound is also something that has turned a lot of people off on first listen as well. The band's guitarist, Ichiro, prefers a tone that is so bright and is so just, ah, ear piercing, that at times it feels like instead of a guitar note, you're just hearing raw feedback or maybe even a dog whistle. The bass lines are usually pretty busy, driving, and occasionally, if they want to stick out, have a crunchy tone to them. The drumming, which I believe on this record is sequenced, programmed, it's basically a drum machine. That's how Melt Banana has recorded a lot of their records, though I have known them to perform live with different drummers over the years. But on this album, the drum sounds are just so loud. They're just so Ah, they sound like gunshots. They're so tightly sequenced too. Some amazing fills on the songs here. And you have a myriad of different beats on this album from dance beats to just straight up rock beats to grindcore style blast beats and D beats and just a, a bunch of different punk beats. And then there is Yasuko's vocals, which maybe throughout the band's career have been the most consistent sound in their canon. Her voice is just so high pitched and it doesn't help that she's shouting and shouting and shouting in this really hyped staccato way that is incredibly ear grabbing. And as far as song structures, Melt Banana can be pretty unpredictable as well with some songs in their earlier records lasting up to 10 seconds. Now, as the band progressed into the 2000s, they drifted with some of their records, away from the typically lo-fi recordings that would cover their earlier stuff, they started fleshing out their songs a little bit, writing tracks that had more accessible rock grooves, maybe incorporated some elements of pop, some electronics. Ichiro really got very, very ambitious with the guitar effects he was toying with. With records like Cellscape in 2003, Melt Banana was sounding way, way, way more coherent than they ever have. And even though they continued to make music under the tag, under the genre of noise rock at that time, the noise that they were bringing to the table was changing from sounding really chaotic and hectic to something that felt way more meticulously crafted. Now, even though Melt Banana has released music in the 10 year period between Cellscape and Fetch, to me, Fetch is really the sequel to Cellscape. It's the growth beyond the, 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 the cleaner and more organized sounds they created on that record. For one, the guitar effects and the layering, which sounded so great on Cellscape, are much more ambitious on this LP and stacked to a higher degree. The sound play on this LP is pretty surprising. Ichiro comes together with some pretty interesting textures. There is actually more melody brought to the table by Mel Banana on this album. There are intros and outros and softer moments worked into some of these songs and this album in general, bringing this a little more dynamics than any other Mel Banana LP. And the production here is so clear and top notch. It perfectly complements Mel Banana's incredibly busy sound. Me being a fan of Melt Banana since college and also being aware of their musical trajectory over the course of their discography, it's hard for me not to see Fetch as Melt Banana's best album. This LP kicks off with the track Candy Gun. The opening of this song just starts with these colorful, 
epic layers of guitar leads that actually sound not too unlike something I would normally hear on a Marnie Stern album. But what ends up arriving around the corner of this intro is something that's very different with the throbbing bass lines, the very sharp, fast rock drumming, and Yasuko's very ha! energetic shouts that are interrupted only by these very colorful shots of guitar noise. This is a formula that the band repeats with even better results on the song Infection Defective. <laughs> That little two-note slide in this track is so freaking infectious, but yet it also sort of sounds like a siren to uh, an ambulance or something like that. Their music seems so meticulously and melodically crafted here, even though you are hearing such an overwhelming sound being brought to the table when you dive into it. It's just so perfectly executed. It's like, wow, there is not a note or a sound out of place on this song, on this entire album, is there? And at least for me, it's rare that a band comes along that, that seeks to reach this level of execution, perfection, and yet their music stays so visceral, exciting, and joyous. Joyous despite the fact that on this track, the drums are so loud that they're like bombshells exploding, that there's even a moment with some tremolo guitar picking that sounds pretty heavy metal for just a just a little spot in this track. Yasuko actually experiments with her vocals a little bit on the next track here, one of the first tracks to drop from this album, The Hive. It's a song that actually sees Yasuko's voice with autotune, or some kind of autotune-esque effect, and it actually doesn't sound too bad, not that it complements her voice or makes it sound amazing, but it works for her in the fact that it seems, at least here, like a weird little distortion effect because she's not really singing in a typical or a normal way. And the end result of her voice in this effect is she sounds like a robot malfunctioning, going berserk, just about to explode. And the guitar work on this track matches that with something that is just as dizzying as frantic with these guitars that are constantly sliding up in this very noisy way on the chorus. And on the bridge to this track with these constantly skipping guitar notes, it's like taking a sample of a guitar and just repeating it on end. The vocal adventures on this record continue with the track Schemes of the Tales, where Yasuko actually has her vocals multi-tracked on top of one another in a pretty harmonious way. This, combined with the pummeling drums and the really triumphant guitar melodies, makes Schemes maybe one of the most joyous musical beatings of 2013. And the Closer Zero on here too features, again, what I think is a bit of auto-tune, but the instrumental in the background is not normally what you would hear Melt Banana pursue. There's a dance beat and a really sweet vocal melody, and Yasuko's vocals seem so heavily treated that it's almost like listening to a keyboard as opposed to a person's voice. And it's a pretty catchy tune too, but still, in my opinion, this song is maybe the lowest point on this album because of the really redundant and repetitive guitar layering and the really abrupt finish that this song meets at its end. But still, this track goes to show that despite the fact that Mel Banana is such a loud, fast, and in a way an abrasive band, they're not a dark group. Their music doesn't feel tortured. Their music doesn't portray, for me, any type of suffering. If their music does manage to appeal to you, it's actually pretty exciting and, and somewhat smile-inducing. I think the dreariest song on this entire album is the track My Missing Link, where you have the guitars taking a much more minor tone, and you have one tremolo pick note on top of another, creating this darkly epic menagerie of guitar sounds. The vocals on this track are harmonized as well, but as far as their performance, they feel like they're taking a bit more of a stern tone. There are shorter tracks on this album as well that are just as enjoyable as some of the longer songs. Tracks that barely break the two minute mark, tracks like Lie Lied Lies, where you've essentially got these punk riffs layered with noise, played at light speed, and then there's Vertigo Game, which has the syncopated snare drums and guitar riffs. This track actually sounds like some kind of weird cyberpunk college football fight song from the year 20XDX. I love it. There are just so many moments on this album that feel familiar 
to Melt Banana's style that feel like something I would expect from Melt Banana, but they're doing it better than ever. And then on top of that, there are spots where they're really venturing outside of their comfort zone and seeing a lot of success as well. After decades of existence and this very short studio album hiatus, Melt Banana has come back and, and has proven that they are still frantic speed noise virtuosos and are capable of making one of the boldest rock albums of the year. I'm feeling a light to decent nine on this album. Tran, position. But if you've given this LP a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, Melt Banana, forever.